Alright, hey guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at object masking with the Blender internal renderer. And um, you'll have to excuse me today if I sniffle a little bit or my voice is a little bit different because I'm a little bit sick today, but I uh, still needed to record, so um, here we go. So today we're going to talk about um, material index and object index and how they can be used to mask certain objects out of your render and into your um, photos. Now. Uh, what I'm about to show you is probably not the most practical application of it as, um, as of masking as with this example it could be done a lot of other ways but um, this just is an intro to how object and index or, and material indexes work to uh, just help you understand what they are and how to use them. So here we have this basic scene here and um, let me just subdivide this Suzanne really quickly just to make it look a little bit better so that'll be fine right there and we'll set this to smooth and um, now we have this scene and uh, if we render it really quickly you'll see we have uh, just, just a real basic scene here. There's nothing fancy at all, just a few point lights and some ambient occlusion. So what we want to do is put these three objects, but not this plane, into, uh, into not this one, but uh, let's see, do I have the picture here? Hmm. No, I don't seem to have the picture uh, viewable at the moment, but uh, let me just open it on my desktop here. Yep. Hold on, loading up in GIMP. And I just opened up in GIMP just to show you guys that uh, didn't want to open up a preview. So we're going to be putting these objects here, with not including the plane, into this photo right here, just on the beach. Now it's not going to look perfect. I haven't set up the camera angle correctly, and this is a HDR photo, so it's not actually going to look right. But this is just an example, like I've said. So what we're going to do here is first, we're going to have our plane selected. We're going to go over to the object panel, and we're going to change the pass index over here, down here, under relations and under the layers. We're going to change it to 1. We're going to go to our monkey. We're going to change the pass index to 2. We're going to change the cone to 3. And we're going to change our cube to 4. So now we have four different passes. And uh, it's not going to look like much right now if we render it. Uh, it's not going to look anything different. But um, I'll show you what this is doing in a few minutes. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to select our plane again. And we're going to go back over to the materials. We're going to set a new material. We're going to just change it all up to this. And it'll be a blue. And then we're going to go over here to our monkey and we're going to select this blue we're going to make a different material now and this this monkey will be green and then we're going to have another material over here it's not really green but uh, it's close uh this cone will be pink and then a third material and uh, these don't look nice they're just uh they're just here to show you guys the example like i've said and this one will be orange so these co colors are all pretty horrible now if we render this you'll see that nothing in the render besides the colors has really changed and uh, we still need to mask these objects into the other image so I know there are a few ways to go about this, but this is just one particular way. So now with our plane, excuse me, <laughs> selected again, we're going to go down here and to where it says options and you see pass index, we're going to also change this to one. For our monkey, we're going to change it to two. I believe that's the same pass as the object and it doesn't have to be the same pass. It can be completely different. We're going to change this cone to pass three and we're going to change this cube to pass four. And now what we're actually going to do, um, what I did kind of do by a little bit by accident here is I changed this, each of these to have their own individual object passes. But we actually want everything but the plane to have the same object pass. So we're going to change the cones pass to two and uh, the cubes pass to two. So now these three all have the same object pass of two. And don't worry, we're about to um, explain what these do. And then this uh, plane has a pass of one. Now these materials all have their own individual passes and we'll get to um, what the difference between these two is in a minute. So what we're going to do over here also, which I've already done this, but you need to know how to do this to proceed to the next step. Go over to the render panel, go drop down the layers, and what you want to do is select the, uh, right now it would look like this by default. You want to select the object index and material index. And I've also gone down and changed in shading. I've changed the uh, alpha from sky to transparent just to make this a little bit easier on myself. So let's uncheck that. Now that we have this, we're going to hit render again. And right now we see we still have the same image. Um, and if we go into transparent mode, you'll see where the sky is. It's transparent, and that's good. But what we're also going to look at here is we're going to look at the index OB. And you'll see that all these are white, which doesn't really ever help us because that includes the plane, and we want to not have the plane in the final. And with the index material, we also have that. And you'll see the Z maps are the same. So how are we going to do this? Well. This is uh, passes is a really nifty um, thing that you can take advantage of in the compositor to create um, good masks, and they're really efficient masks as well. 
So we have the render layer here and our two in, uh, index OB and index MA. And once again, if we were to look at those, they would still be white. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to put an output. We're going to have a viewer here. And then we're going to have another input. It's going to be an image. I'm going to open this image. And this can be an image from anywhere. I'm just going to open my sample image from the desktop. So now we have this. And it will preview it really quickly. So now you see that is our image. And it is quite big. But we zoom out a little bit there, pressing the V key to zoom out in the compositor and Alt V to zoom back in. But uh, yeah, that'll be fine right there. So now what do we do? Well, first of all, we're going to have a color or an, uh, and we're going to choose alpha over and we're going to select this first one here is the first image and we're going to select this second one here is the second image. Now, actually, I want to uh, reverse these around because the one in Blender, how the compositor works is um, in general, the bottom image is actually the one that's going to be put on top. This is not always the case with all nodes, but with most nodes that do overlays and such, um, it is the case. So now you'll see here we have the objects in the scene, but one, they're not positioned perfectly, and two, there is also the plane here, which is not something we want. So how do we get rid of this? Well, first what we're going to do is we're going to move them to the correct place. So we're going to put translate, and we're going to put it over here where our render layer is. And we're just going to move this down like negative 100 maybe. Yeah, and so now you see that's just a more optimal placement of this. But that's not what the main meat of our thing is right here. So what I'm going to show you next is the masks. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go f a converter and we're going to select ID mask. Now this node is incredibly helpful and it pretty much does all the work with our masks. So first we're going to select the index, uh, material index because I want to show you this one individually first before I show you the other one. And right now, if we go to the viewer and you see the, um, we're gonna turn on anti-aliasing just so the image looks nicer. And you'll see with the index of zero, everything in the scene is black except for the sky, which is white. That's not what we want. We want things with an index of these numbers. So uh, I believe this one was a two, this one was a three, and this one was a four. So if we do this, go back into the node editor and look at this as we go index one, that is the plane and also the monkey, I believe. I think we did not change that. Let's change that right now. So go over here. Yep, and we need to change that to two. So now we're going to render this image again really quickly so we can get that change updated. And we could also turn on auto render as well. So now you'll see here we have just the plane. So this is one way we could invert this image and then mask out the plane. But we're going to do it a slightly different way with our object um, index. And the object index is quite similar to the material index, except Material index is defined by materials. So if a material is on pass two, all those objects with the same material will be on pass two, which is really helpful when you're doing multiple groups of objects. And also you can put two different materials on the same pass and that won't create a problem either, which can also be really helpful. Passes in general are really helpful. So now if we go to index two, you'll see here's the monkey, the next one should be the cone, and then the last one will be the cube. So we have all of these. But I want to select all three of those at once, and I don't want to combine them. You know, it'd be a little bit of a tedious process. Well, luckily, we set the passes in the object layer. And now if we go here to index, first, if we have zero, of course, there's nothing selected because there was nothing on pass zero. If we go to pass one, you'll see we have the plane. And once again, we could just invert this and mask out, but we're going to do it a bit differently. If we go to index two, you'll see we have our three different objects with three different materials. And all we have to do here is take this alpha up to the fac, um, the factor um, part of our node set up here in alpha over. And then if we drag this image down here, you'll see that we kind of don't have the uh, the look we're going for. In fact, some of the doesn't even seem to be masking out the plane in all areas. And the reason why we, this happened is because of our translate node. We need to also apply this to the ID. So if we apply that to the ID, you'll see there quickly, everything is now on the beach. Now there's not shading because I did not extract the shadow layer as well, but you can see here, this is pretty much a good start and a good intro into ID masking. So um, we can go ahead and render this out and we'll let this render and then we'll get the composited image. And there we go, there's our composite. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial. Sorry about being sick and uh, hope to see you all next time. Bye.